Somebody want to read the question to me? That's the one with the 1.4 megapascals and the... Oh, yes. Okay. I would tell you that the equation we're going to do is P equals gamma H plus P zero. Uh, and it's appropriate to talk about that because on Monday, this lecture it was on pressure measuring devices. This same equation is used as the basis for the pressure measuring devices. This is a reference pressure. And uh, if, so this particular problem we have, we're going to have since we're given it as gauge pressure, we're gonna have the pressure at the, at the water surface is zero. And then we're down here given it as um, 1.4 megapascals. And we're asked to calculate this depth in meters. Because it's gauge pressure, I think that's what most people were messing up was the fact that we uh, need to set this to zero because it's a gauge pressure. Most people were thinking it should be 129. But if this is zero, then we just have H equals the pressure we're given over the, the specific weight. And the way we're going to do that is, so that's this 1.4 times 10 to the 6. And then we use the specific weight of water and the the specific gravity that we're given. Yes. Oh, one point zero two two. No, I thought. I thought it was 1.025. Oh, you might be looking, I made a new one of these. Are you doing absolute pressure quiz new? Okay, I made a new one that, that, that um, there should be a one that's just absolute pressure quiz. And the only difference is that it's going, the, the old one that they all worked was gonna have the, it doesn't have that pressure at depth as a variable or the, or the specific gravity. So imagine you're looking at a problem where, that, where it's 1.4 megapascals and the specific gravity is 1.025. Yeah, this, is, this by the way is something I wanted you to work on, but we'll talk about that later making these um, quizzes so that they can have uh, variable uh, given values. But this is the problem, right? This is, if you plug in those numbers, what you get, yeah, I believe is 139.52, which you round up to 140 meters. And who uh, who asked the question? Thank you. Uh huh. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Who was that? That was Daniel. Yes. Uh, okay. All right. Yes, I think what people most often did was you subtracted off 
atmospheric pressure from this value. And then that gave you a smaller number for this value. But it specifically says the gauge pressure down here is 1.4 megapascals. All right. All right, then. I was going to look at the homework, or no, sorry, I was going to look at the lecture notes for Monday and today to see if there were any questions that came from that, because there are several worked problems that I'm using as part of the lecture. Once Now that we've gotten into the, the meat of the technical material, it's, I think, often best to work some problems into the, directly into the lecture. I think the easiest way to get this is just uh, Right, and today's lecture is on hydrostatic forces on plane and curved surfaces. On Monday, the lecture was pressure monitoring devices. I'll start because this is the Monday one. Like I said, it has problems in it. This, I know I've asked a question like this on a test or a final. It's, it's basic, straightforward, find a gauge pressure at a particular water depth given, given the specific gravity. Yeah, this is, this is very much like that, that problem we just worked. And that's in the, an example I'll, I worked a second example where you had a layered fluid. Were there any, anybody have a question on that? I think that the, the temptation is to try to do this in one step, but because there's a lighter fluid overlaying a heavier fluid, you have to find the pressure as the sum of two components, the pressure change that occurs from going from the water surface to the boundary between the different layers of fluid, and then from there to the, the location where you want to calculate the pressure. And for each, you calculate this change in pressure as the specific weight of that particular fluid times the depth, the distance that you move. If you move down, then you're gonna get a pressure that's increasing. All right, and then there's, um, yeah, so we go through mercury barometer and there's a problem here where you're, and this is quite similar, I think, to the first problem where you're given inches of mercury and then you, in this case, you don't use it to calculate a pressure, but you use it to calculate the atmospheric pressure. And that works because the, the vapor pressure, that is the, this reference pressure that you would add to the other term, the reference pressure is the vapor pressure of mercury, which is a really small number. And then we talk piezometer tubes, and I tried to give an, a, um, an application to hydrology, because that's the, 
I've done a lot of water quality and water resource monitoring. And so I've been out in the field measuring that distance to, well, we, we would just drop a pressure transducer down a particular distance and then use that to determine the water level. There are um, gizmos that you just drop down like a calibrated uh, tape and it has a little gizmo on the bottom that when it hits water, it uh, buzzes. So you just slowly lower the tape until you get a buzz. And then there's a, there's a piezometer problem here where you're given, uh, you're given the distance from the bottom of the tank to the, to the surface where the, the oil in this case comes in contact with the, the gas that's above it. And then you're also given a location where the, the piezometer, well, you're given the height of the piezometer and you use that information to figure out the, the head space pressure. And then we talk manometers, which is the third sort of pressure monitoring device. I will say that over the years, I've uh, students have expressed lots and lots of questions with any sort of manometer problem. My my recommendation is to to go through this and until you understand it and. If you don't understand it, bring bring those questions to to either the class or to a problem session to, or, or to a health help session. I worked, I think I worked one manometer problem, oh, two manometer problems, yeah, in the lecture. One is to calculate the difference in pressures from two locations that are at the same elevation. You're using the height of this manometer to, to determine a pressure difference. And they, you then use that pressure difference to calculate how much flow is going through the pipe. And then there's another one here. Okay, and I'm being reminded that I've got 10 minutes to the next class.